everyone. Well, as you can see, I have two guests today. Uh, first is my friend Beth, who's been on the show a number of times, Beth McGregor, uh, talking about certain health issues. And with her today from Mexico, which is really awesome, Dr. Beloso. Welcome to the show, Dr. Beloso. Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome back, Beth. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having us. For sure. We're excited to we're excited to let everyone know what we're doing and how we're helping so many people. Okay. Yeah. So doctor, I want to know when Bev first, well, when you first met Bev. Okay, the first time that I met Bev is over two years. Yeah, it's around two years and a half probably. Yes. Uh, be, before we start, I will be quick. I just want that you can say the theme because it's important that you know, like I just don't work by myself. I like to work with nurses and I like to work with a specialty doctors, okay? Sounds so good. this is so this is awesome because uh, I'm from Canada too for an Ontario. So I know that in Canada we don't have those privileges that we can have a nurse uh, at home that he can for the recovery and plus a specialty doctor. Right. Uh, so the specialty doctor that you are going to see, he is uh, he works with patients that they are in the intensive care area. Like he uh, see in uh, inter intern medicine, but also when no more now, uh, like uh, last year when it was all the problems with the COVID, he was in the intensive care area. So okay. I think I met him two years ago. And one of the things that I see that he's not just a uh, doctor, he has a, a big, big heart. He's a human person. He loves what he does. And the nurse, he also loves what he does and is what we love so much what we do with patients. We don't see us as a patient. Right. We see as a human being and we want to do the best for them to feel the more comfortable. Okay. Right. I want to be so quick because I know that you don't have a lot of time. So this is the Dr. Gomez. Hello. What was your name Hi, again? Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I, I didn't get your name. Uh, my name is Luis Vicente Gomez. I am doctor in area critical care, okay? Okay. I am I'm from Tepic, Nayarit, Mexico, okay? Uh, my specialty is in critical care medicine. Okay. Awesome. That's nice wonderful. Wonderful. Nice to meet you too. Thank you very much for being on being here with us. I appreciate okay. that. So now, Bev, I'm going to talk to you for a second, Bev. Oh, somebody else to me. Yes. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. You? I'm good. What, what's your name, please? My name is Jorge Armando Carrillo Salcedo. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't I, think I, I can. I am a, a nurse. Oh, you're the nurse, right? Well, it's yeah. he is the care of me. Oh, oh wonderful. yeah. <laughs> wonderful. That's you know, it's so nice that you're all able to to be here on camera and introduce yourselves and and for Bev will be able to fill in your part of her care. So I think it's very wonderful and I'm so happy you were able to do this. So thank you for that. Okay, you're welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor. Thank you. That was really awesome. So I'm gonna to talk to Bev for just a second. Bev, I wanna know why you reached out to Dr. Beloso. Okay, how, how this all came to be, as you know, uh, from previous shows, I had a very horrible experience with Dr. Rebecca Nelson, a plastic surgeon who was to help me uh, reconstruct my breast after breast cancer. She virtually butchered me and caused very much grief. I've been dealing with this for seven and a half years. Um, I was so frustrated, I could not find anyone to help repair her botched job in Canada. They would look at it and tell me there's no way they could do this. So I went to Mexico. Um, I'd heard some good reports about a Dr. Hoya, and that is uh, the first surgeon who addressed my uh, hernia issue. Um, Dr. Hoya is now so busy that he's no longer um, doing actual surgeries, but he is, uh, for me, uh, he put me to look after me was Dr. Anna. Dr. Anna came to the surgery. Um, she helps and assists in the surgeries. 
um, for me. Um, the last surgery, um, Anna has cared for me for the last two surgeries, actually three surgeries, because she's going to be looking after me this time as well. This will be my fourth surgery there. Mm -hmm. And um, this Anna has been uh, instrumental in finding me the best care and the best solutions for me. And um, along that way, I've made a very good friend. In fact, I call her my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Now, now, doctor, for your part, now you're seeing Bev for the first time, the medical situation. What did you observe? Well, the things here that I, that I observed, I was feeling myself too, because when you are coming from another country, is we call like a multicultural shock. Like when I yeah. came to Canada as an immigrant, but this is probably different, but you feel lost, you don't have contacts, you don't have uh, friends. I mean, in that case, uh, I have my ex-husband, but it's still like a, you don't feel like you don't have orientation. You need someone like a settlement worker. Nice. And in the time when I met uh, a Beverly, uh, you know, in the hospital, after the surgery, there are medical someplace that we have to be looking after of the patients. So as soon as I saw her, I saw her that she was uh, frustrated. She wasn't depressed because that time is when it was so hard for her to she didn't know what time to be back home. She didn't know what's going on with her recovery. And because uh, when you don't know someone and you just feel like she came by her own. She yeah. didn't come with a friend or with a family member. So, and then I always tell Bev, I, I don't see a patient like patient. I see patient like, like they are part of me. I passion what I do. And is what the other two people that I introduced, the nurse and the specialty doctors, I feel like a connection with them because both, I mean, we are more people, but I just didn't want to be something small is why I only bring these two, but I have urologists, I have a uh, gynecologist, I have different specialty doctors that they can come to your house. And actually you never see this in Ontario. I don't know about British Columbia, but in Ontario, it's hard that uh, even a specialty doctor to come to see what's going on with you. Yeah. So yeah. It, so it's one of the things that I took that I, uh, I was able this time that she came, I set up everything for her. I set up a place. Uh, also, we had a home care person that that lady, she drives her, she cleans, she cooks, she uh -huh. helped her with uh, taking for to do the shopping. Uh, she, uh, and she's good what she does. And it's what I'm looking for, for people that they really worry yeah. that they don't just go for the money, that they go because they really love to do uh, the job yeah, yeah and so Dan is the same thing even if I say did you want to to have a rest he say no because I'm working and I say yes but you need to do your own things and the doctor <laughs> the doctor Gomez that I uh introduced to you the time when I met him is because he was a patient that it was in critical care that he only give uh, it was only 30 percent chance of life so when he actually came, that patient last two years or, or over two years. So that, that patient, he come to be a friend of Dr. Gomez. They were really close. So he's, and he, when I met him and I said, wow, this is, we have a lot of things on human. We don't just see patient as a patient, we see as a family. Right. Like he actually uh, was helping all the time and he never did, even, uh, care about the money he was more concerned about his health yeah so when I met him and I say I want I want to ask him if he wants to be part of this that we were thinking just for the recovery after the surgery to be in charge with a patient and we want to do and as a nice environment that they can be at home or in a condo or something more special because hospital I think sometimes is because he's close and he's no, he's, he gets the patient, get like a depressed. Yeah. And I can't even see with Bev, the first time that I met her, she wasn't a lot of depressed. And after this time that I taken to a place that she has a nurse, that she was in a different care, I can see that I couldn't believe after the surgery, she said, I feel great. And I said, wow. So it was big change. Like when you see patients at home. So it's why we, we try to do all this team together like the recovery is so important to have it in a nice environment right yeah Bev, back to you again for a second I just yes. thinking about that uh, that initial trip for you to mexico 
must yes. have been scary. Again, as the doctor said, you're, you're by yourself, right? You didn't know where to go or what to do. You just knew you had to do something, right? And she is, I call her my earth angel because, um, she, the, and I'm going to say that not just for Anna, but I find that with the, the Mexican doctors and nurses in general, they all are very passionate and very caring and um, will go above and beyond to help you and don't dismiss you. Even, even, even your craziest thought, they, they embrace you and, and help you. They don't dismiss you. And I find in our Western treatment, it's very dismissive of late. Yeah. But when I got there, because she knew, she, she knew my situation with my hernia, she knew my story and she went above and beyond. I mean, she was the doctor in the clinic that I had paid to have the surgery. And she took it upon herself because she knew I was there by myself to come and look after me for when I was released. She just made sure she went above and beyond. And then I started talking to her about my experiences here and how I had a distrust for medical profession because of my experiences here. She has restored my faith, but I also want people here to have an opportunity to know that this exists. And there's, they have the lowest infection rate in North America in their hospitals because of their cleanliness right. and their attention to details. And um, I, can't, I can't tell you, I can't even do it justice with my words. All yeah. I can show you is a progression of you seen over the years of how I've become and what I look like now. And that's all Viva La Mexican doctors and nurses and care providers. They are the most humble, kind, passionate people I have ever met in my life and I want to help them yeah help others I want to help other people who here are in the same boat that I was and it's not it's not it's not bank breaking because they will accommodate you to within your means okay okay which is really really important for a lot of people Right. Absolutely. I mean, if we all had money to go wherever we needed to go for health care, we would do it. But obviously we don't. Um, I'm just wondering, doctor, um, what is your what do you think? What is your opinion of why doctors here in this part of North America are not as accommodating or not as giving as your as Mexican doctors are? Oh, I I was in Ontario for 17 years, and I was fighting to becoming a doctor because my life, I, Canada is my second country, and I love Canada. And Canada has wonderful doctors, the same like Mexico. But the thing here is the difference in Mexico is that we are like a United States. We had private hospitals, and we had government oh, hospitals. Okay. So I work for both. I work for the government, and I work for the private. So I can see like in the government hospital, it's kind of like the same thing like in Canada because there are a big waiting list of patients, so they have to wait. But what's, what happened in Ontario where a patient say, I cannot wait for a treatment one year or to see a specialty doctor, the first thing what they do, they go to United States. Right. But to come to Mexico, no, because I'm Mexican as well, but just being here in Puerto Vallarta, to, to be in the sunshine, to be in a paradise is another kind of medicine. Because when I was in Ontario, because I was living in the Northern Ontario, I was going to work and in the morning was dark. I come in from work and in the uh, four or five o'clock was dark as well. Right. So those those things, uh, of course, is why we have a lot of, pa no patients, just visitors that they come just to, to see the sunshine, to see the sunset. But now uh, talking about the medical tourism, that is a, a good thing that, we can offer different things like, because it's not just one private hospital. We have too many private hospitals and every private hospital has different range of price. Okay. So, so for people that they can afford it, they can go to a nice hospital and we can just build, for, depends about the necessity of the patient and depends what the patient needs. Because for example, one thing is emergency and another thing is urgency. And for example, uh, surgery like a knee replacement, hip replacement or back surgery, those things, they're not really urgency. So the doctors in Canada say, you have to wait one year, you have to wait one year and a half or sometimes two years. Yeah. So, so it's why some patients, they come down to Mexico because they know they can have the surgery just like a, if 
if we were together, like how, the, how I did it with Beth, and one day she was able to do blood tests, she was able to, to, to do uh, the imaginal test, and she was able at evening to see the specialty doctor. So we can do all the all arrangements. All in one day. And all wow. Ones, yes. Wow, nice. So it's why we work for. And is I think it's amazing, not just to be coming here to, to do a treatment yeah. as a surgery, you know, to be as a mental health, because coming here is is it's a paradise. So it's all the good things that we have to think about. Too. Right. Yeah. So it just sounds so great. It really, really does, you know, and I'm, I'm so glad that you will be able to be to join me on the show here. And, and with what was Bev's idea to have you on, I think it's awesome that you're able to, to tell people what exactly you're doing and why you're doing it. And it, you know, Bev told me uh, off camera that, that together you're, you're wanting to have uh, give people as much information as you can to help them for whatever their need is, right? Yes, Absolutely. it's like, a, it's like a, for example, as an immigrant, as soon as I came to, to Canada, I have a settlement worker that she, for me, she was awesome. She gave me everything what I need because you come and you don't know nothing about that. Yes. So even if you are there for years after you have kids, you don't know what is the best for the kids. You don't know about rentals. You don't know about nothing like but here will be advice as a medical medical advice and right. and i feel happy because i have a good team that we worry about our patients and we just want to put all our heart in those patients okay yeah. that's awesome and, absolutely and i'm just gonna i'm gonna speak to that what i'm gonna say is they um go above and beyond for everything and it's not just for knee replacements um you can go there for cancer treatment. You can get dental work. If you need plastic surgery, we have a whole, I don't know, a whole medical team that can address every issue that anyone may have that they may be waiting for unnecessarily here. Right. And realistically, for the cost of your um, airline ticket and your accommodations and everything, it's like um, you won't find a better deal. And the thing is, it's all based on your needs and wants and likes. So whatever you want to food cooked, they have someone who will come even book your ticket, um, book your accommodation, book your surgery, book your doctors. We can set up these Zoom chats um, while you're here in Canada to speak directly with the doctor so they can interview you and um, see if it's a good fit. And um, so all of that. You don't have to do anything. It's all done for you by us. So people for Bev, people can contact you on Facebook if they want to. And they can contact me. They can call me. I will, I will give you my um, personal phone number. If anyone's interested, to, they can text or call 604-316-5376. Or they can uh, email me at bevymac1, and that's B for Bev, E for egg, V for Victor, I for igloo, E for egg, M for Mary, A for apple, C for Canada, then the number one, so it's bevymac1 at gmail.com. And I am very passionate that I have found a group of people who are as passionate to help people as I am. And I think um, that's what we're called, passionate care by Arda, um, but we're going to be, we can, we can arrange it anywhere in Mexico. So wherever anyone wanted to go, but for right now, um, we're focusing on Bayarda because that's where I go and that's what I know. Right, all right, that makes sense, yeah. Um, okay, so I think we're just about out of time. Um, okay. What I would like you both or wherever, uh, when we finish this, can you um, can you send me the, the names of the, the doctor and the nurse Cause it's so, so that written down so that I can, when this is edited, I can have their names put there, okay? Yeah, I'll yeah. text it to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's the spelling that I need, you know. <laughs> can, can, they, can they say goodbye to you, please? please absolutely. Yeah, Stay there, Bev, because we're not finished. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for being on the show. Um, hope to see you again in the future. That would be lovely. All right, I got to say something exciting. I want, Bye -bye. I'm going... I want Hello. to tell you that I'm coming to your wedding, just so you know. I'll see you soon. Thank you very I much. See nice to meet you. See you later. Okay? Thank you, Doctor. You. This is also wonderful. Thank you so much.
All right. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now. If you want to put you want me to hang in? Yeah, just hang in while I say bye goodbye bye. to the audience. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, guys. I love you. Bye Anna, bye. I'll call you later. I'll call you in a bye bit. Bye bye. Bye, bye. Thank you, Anna. I love Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> okay, Bev, I'm going to say goodbye to the audience, but you stay there, okay? Yes. Oh, everybody, this, is, this has been uh, one of those awesome, awesome, informative uh, interviews. And I hope if you, I hope you listen to what uh, Bev had to say, Bev McGregor, you can find her on Facebook and I'll make sure her phone number is included. The doctor's name, all of the names are going to be in the editing. And I hope you take care of yourselves, everybody, and see you next time. Until then, peace out, everyone. A sense of community. To the wax a place to be A sense of community where you're free Rolling through the mountains Rolling through the valley Rolling through paradise with me It's multicultural You're sure to see it all To the wax a place to be you'll see Come party in the park, go dancing after dark, chill a wax a place to be, you'll see.